My next guest has sold three other businesses in the past, including one for nine figures. Now he's working on an app that helps kids and families become better with money. Specifically, it helps kids learn how to earn money, save money, invest, and a whole lot more. So if you're a parent and you're in one of those circumstances where your kids are always asking you for money, this app can be the solution. It's really slick. In this episode, he really gets into personal finance, but we also talk about how he's building this company. This is a B2C SaaS low price point, and it's starting to scale pretty fast without a whole lot of effort. So we talk about what he's doing from a marketing perspective as well. This episode is packed with a ton of value around personal finance, as well as how to build a B2C SaaS. Please welcome Scott Donnell. Scott, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me. So why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I... um... I am the leading expert in financial literacy for kids and teenagers. We've helped about 6 million families, and uh, that's my passion. That's probably one of the biggest needs we have as a country. The kids are not learning money in school, man. Right. They're not. They're not learning anything about how to make and manage money. It's just not helping them. Why do we have checking accounts if no kid's ever going to write a check? You ever thought about that? <laughs> Why do we jump to geography or uh, geometry and algebra without teaching kids taxes and investing and budgeting? Right. Like it's like what the? This is crazy. Yeah. So my background, um, my first company I started about 15 years ago is called Apex. Okay, it's a school fundraising franchise. We raise money for schools. We teach leadership and fitness and character with our teams, and we go in and we raise money. So we've raised about half a billion dollars now for schools nationwide. It's called Apex Fun Run. I started it because my wife was a first grade teacher before we had all our kids. And she spent her whole paycheck on those kids. And I was like, why did you just spend a paycheck on your classroom? She's like, we all do that. And I was like, okay, well, this stops now. Mm -hmm. So we started Apex to raise money for schools. Part of the money goes to the teachers to help cover their budgets in the rooms the schools buy technology, teacher aids, you know, playground equipment, all these things to help with the school. Okay. And the business exploded. Like it just went nationwide real quick. So we had millions of customers, 600 employees. Um, it just took over. It, it, it basically replaced product sales. Instead of selling chocolate and magazines and gift cards and pizza and all that junk, we were able to create a system that made over twice as much money for the schools than they'd ever made before. Nice. So that's, it just took off. And then as we started working in thousands of schools, we realized these kids aren't learning money. They're not learning financial competency. They're not learning critical thinking or practical skills for success. What is going on? That was really the light bulb moment for me. So the last three companies I've had, as we've scaled all of them, have all been in financial literacy. Okay. Um, first one we started doing was children's business fairs. We started doing them for free, just for fun. I've never made a dime off of that business because it's our give back. But when now there's thousands of children's business fairs all over the world, you can go to childrensbusinessfair.com and start one today. And kids come to the local park once a year, they bring products that they made, they sell them to customers. They make 300 bucks in a few hours and they are like fired up and they're capable and confident for life. So that was the first one. And then when COVID hit, we started myfirstsale.com. And that was to help kids do online businesses. Their first Etsy, right? Their first Shopify, things like that. Amazon, helping them learn how to do a launch online. So again, teaching kids money skills. And now we have Gravy Stack. Gravy Stack is an app that's the first bank for kids and teens that's gamified. So now the kids learn all of our seven money skills through games and a real bank with mom and dad. And they're intrinsically motivated to just create value everywhere they go. They earn, they manage money, they plan ahead, they cover their own expenses in the home, they start to invest, they learn sharing, then they go through all of our games to do all these real life challenges to learn the skills to succeed. These kids are canceling subscriptions, Sean, in the home, in one of our games. That's awesome. They're, and they're saving mom and dad about $547 on average in that one game, okay? They're getting coupons for the next grocery run. They're flipping assets in the garage that mom and dad don't want anymore. They're going to garage sales. They're doing gigs. Like it's an unbelievable way to teach kids money skills. So that's Gravy Stack. Yes, I love it. Before we dive into Gravy Stack a little more, 
Um, with the previous businesses, I see Apex, Children's Business Fairs, and my first sale. Did you exit these three? <clears throat> yep. We exited two of the three. I also had a biotech company that we took public in Toronto in like 18 months. It was called Happy. It was a crazy nine-figure exit in 18 months. That was wild. Okay. But that was not for kids. That was just as honestly, it was a favor to my relatives. And I scaled it. We built it. We took it public. So what was the name of that? Happy Technologies. We basically digitized drugs. We give you the effect of sleepiness, alertness, focus with a frequency. Incredible technology. We licensed it, created a consumer product. It's like a sleep pad that people can put under their pillow or on their back, mm -hmm. on their work chair. But yeah, it's called Happy. And we just, boom, took it public in Toronto. And then I was back on helping kids. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That is impressive. In, in 18 months, is that from like inception of business to mm -hmm. going public? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wild scale. It almost killed me. In fact, I got, I have a podcast with Dave Asprey on Bulletproof Radio yep. where I talked about how I had CEO burnout. Like my whole body gave out. It was just crazy, man. Like wow. the mental stress, the physical, it was just doing road shows, still building the product. I mean, it was just crazy. All the marketing, all the growth, all the team build, you know, we raised like 20 million bucks all together for it. When it raised 20 million in a nine, nine figure exit, you said. Yeah. Yep. Because the listeners want to know how how did this scale? Was this a marketing hack or a sales hack? Um, most of it was in the IP, right? We had just one of the world's best IP technology. We had 40 patents on this tech. And so we digitized drugs. So it was an incredible, it was an incredible way for people to get off of pills, helped with people with addiction recovery, a lot of military vets, um, people with you know, anxiousness or whatnot. It helped them a ton. And so we're just got out. And people gotcha. started buying it like wildfire. They just got a deal in Target. Now they're in all the Targets selling the products. But yeah, it's called Happy Technologies. And was uh, it a subscription <clears throat> software? How was it yeah. monetized? Yeah, it was a it was a product, a consumer product for a couple hundred bucks, and then like ten bucks a month to have access to all the play the the frequencies and the playlists. Gotcha. So is that viral? It grew that quick through viral activity. That's a yeah, quite impressive. Okay. Yeah, I've had a bunch of different businesses. Like, you know, that was a fast biotech scale. Um, Apex was a franchise system. So we basically just mm -hmm. plotted along for 10, 10 years till we exited. We did exit that business for 30 times earnings, okay. which was an incredible exit. But most of that was because we built a moat around our business at like a mile wide. No, we were the best fundraiser in America, bar none. And it was hassle free. Our culture was incredible. You know, we had 600 people all around the country, like loving what they were doing every day, helping millions of kids. And we were, you know, 93% rebook rate every year from schools. So in a way it was a subscription. It's just a large subscription, $50,000 a pop, right? Is yeah. what we'd raise for the average school. But that just started to scale. And then we started franchising it nationwide. So, you know, experienced business owners would come in, buy a territory, start supporting all the schools and we give them all the tech, yeah. all the training, all the products and you know all the SKUs just right to their door at the school. They just run the programs and super fun business, super fun business. Was it a revenue split <laughs> with the schools or were you charging the schools a fee? It was a revenue split. Uh, smart. So we would get a percentage of the funds raised, yep. which would incentivize the school and there was a sliding scale. So it would the, our percentage that we would get would go down the more it was raised. Yeah. Um, so that the school would get make more and more net. And so yes. that usually it usually covered our costs plus a few thousand bucks a school. Mm -hmm. And we just copy paste, copy paste with 10,000 schools. Brilliant. I that's funny you bring out that. But mm -hmm. I thought of an idea like that and I didn't really fully execute on it, but creating a win-win for nonprofits where they don't, they're not charged anything, but you empower them with the tech and to more efficiently raise money and then you share in the rev. Uh, smart model. <laughs> you it was, it was, I mean, I'll tell you though, you know, everybody likes to, you know, say you're an overnight success. We had the wildest failures, like unbelievable failing in every direction. I, I think I have people talk about my business successes, right? I've had a seven, eight, nine figure exits now, but people, what they should be talking about is all my war medals. Like I have a thousand failures, man. Please, please let's let's jump into three. I want to <laughs> I want to drill into three of these good ones, and then I want to dive into gravy stack a little bit. Yeah. So, well, and again, you only you only lose truly lose if you quit. Yeah. Right. 
most of my failures were inside of the successes. Every company has failures every, every day. Like you got to try new things. You got to try new angles. You got to change your tech. You got to switch out people. You got to, you got to be able to grow. You know, I've made so many mistakes on people decisions, but people are not expenses. People are investments. Five, I can, I can say there's five people I can name off on one hand that made all those companies worth all that money and all that value. Mm. You know, there's a quote out there that one good hire or, or yeah, one good hire is worth 10 times as much as an average hire. One great hire is worth 10 times as much as a good hire. And one world-class hire is 10 times better than the great. That's a thousand X change from an average employee. So what I've seen now is if you just invest in finding the best and you don't settle, people will come in who are way better than you with way better unique abilities and do things that you never even thought of to add value to the business and make things better and make things scale. So I've had so many mistakes on the people side, but now I'm learning as you go. And you just got to, mm -hmm. you got to mm -hmm. know that, every, you know, half of the time you make a mistake right? And, and the other half of the time, the team that got you here is not the team that gets you there. There's a rule of three and 10. Every time a business hits that three or 10 milestone of revenue, you, you've got to think about switching out part of the team because there's zero to one teams, there's startup teams, there's early early adoption teams, there's scale teams, and there's management like growth long-term teams, right? So if your company's at 300,000 versus a million or 3 million versus 10 million or 30 million versus 100 million, that's a different yeah. you know, bag of skills, okay? So you, everyone listening, just think about where you're at in your business and, and how do you get to that, break through that next ceiling? Well, a lot of it is different skill sets and capabilities that gets you to the next milestone. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of mistakes there. You know, we've had, I think tech has been the biggest mistakes I've ever made. I've okay. made millions of dollars of mistakes in technology. Um, you know, we've had websites crash with 40,000 people on them for Apex, uh, crazy, you know, people threatening lawsuits, all these nightmares in technology. Um, a lot of it was just not getting the best. You know, we, when we started Apex, we had, $10 million of prizes and printing and shirts and all these things that we give to schools and kids mm -hmm. by doing the fundraisers. And we get them from overseas. And we started doing on Alibaba of all places. And then things would start to come and these flying monkeys were cross-eyed and the Frisbees were flimsy and they wouldn't fly. And these like spinning tops were, would break in five seconds. And we're like, oh my gosh. And we had no like claws to be able to get anything back. So we just made all these Idiot. terrible mistakes I lost, I, I had to get on an FBI watch list one time because we ordered a whole cargo ship full of flying finger rockets, those foam rockets mm. that you fling for 150,000 kids. And the people, Barbie, her name was Barbie in Japan. <laughs> she put rockets on the side of the box. So when it landed in LA at the port, they called the FBI because it just said rockets on the side and no one touched it. So I had to go out and like show them it was finger rockets, like foam things. So just crazy mistakes, man. Crazy mistakes. I mean, and it doesn't stop either. Like people say like, oh yeah, once you get past it, you're fine. As you scale and as you grow, it's always going to be more and more bigger and bigger problems. So I think the real skill is learning to manage and create a self-managing company and a self-multiplying company with incredible people that are solving problems on your behalf. Right. So I've had over a thousand employees. The best thing you can do is find great people that are covering and, and fixing issues without having to get to you. Right. Right. So for me, I'm only I'm only dealing with the problems that hundreds and hundreds of other people can't solve. Right. And I need to focus all my energy there. And if I didn't have these thousand failures in my tool belt, because I don't say that they're in a garbage can, they're in my tool belt. I can use that experience to be able to help me solve bigger and bigger problems. And now I'm solving billion dollar problems around the world instead of solving million dollar problems right. around the world. So Gravy Stack is going to be one of the top apps in the world. Mark my words. Like our goal is 50 million families financially competent and ready to succeed, kids and parents. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one of the biggest in the world, but we have had to overcome $10 million of failures to get here. You know, we have 30 patents on the app. We have a whole tech team, 20 people working around the clock building this thing. We've had to change over our tech three times. We've had all these mistakes when we go out to the market and families have issues and they're like, change this, fix that. Like hundreds of iterations of this app. So you have to just go through that. It's like a march, you know, and you're just hoping it's not a death march. <laughs> you're hoping that it's a march to the, the promised land, you know. 
So that's it, and it never ends. You know, if you're listening, there's a funny quote by Elon Musk where they're like, "What? Well, what's your advice to young entrepreneurs?" He's like, "If you need to take on, if you need to take encouragement and advice as an entrepreneur, then you're not an entrepreneur." Right. Right. That's the point. It's like I don't need anybody's encouragement. I mean, I love. I obviously I love encouragement. I need support. I need people around me, close friends that are accountable and trusted. But if I was doing this for the applause of others, no. I'd be done. I'd be yeah. done a decade ago. So. And that's, I'm also not in it for the money. I could coast, man. I could go, I could go all the way to my great grandkids being just fine now. But the more I learn about financial literacy, financial competencies and family legacy, that's what I train on now worldwide. Kids, it's actually a bad idea to pass on all your stuff to the next generations. Mm -hmm. That's how you get lottery ticket kids. Yep. That's how you get trust fund kids. And 90% of that's gone by the grandkids anyway. But underneath that number is a whole host of problems. Divorce, destruction, estrangement of kids, violence, emotional health issues, drugs, alcohol. When you give a kid stuff they didn't earn, it causes a whole host of problems and it kills their, dr their drive to create value in the world. That's why we wrote the book, the best-selling book that we just put out, Value Creation Kid. The healthy struggles your children need to succeed. That's why we're so focused on this because, if Sean, if we can change the next generation's mindset around this... And, and create a whole army of tens of millions of kids that are just creating value everywhere they go, being financially competent, not straddling themselves in debt, blowing up the economy in a good way. It changes everything, man. It changes all these other things down line that everyone's trying to focus on. This fixes all that, most all that. And so we, we train on two things, financial competency and family legacy, which is how you stay deeply connected with deep roots and wings with your family, right? When you put those two things together, it's like rocket fuel for your children and your grandchildren. So that's my life, dude. That's awesome. Good, good context there. I have so many different things I want to talk about here, but let's jump into <laughs> something we talked about before we hit record, which is the seven money skills. Let's dive into that. Yeah. So we have a course. So we have Gravy Stack, which is our app. You can just download that on iOS and Android. Get going. If you have kids ages six and up, even through college age kids or teenagers or friends, kids or nieces, nephews, get on that app. The app is the best way to, to teach these seven money skills to your kids. It's a real bank and it's a ton of gigs and games and it creates this system in the home where kids are creating value all the time. It's awesome, okay? But our seven money skills, we actually have a course too that we train on our, our, our site. Um, it's our family money skills course. And this goes through the seven money skills. So here they are. Earn, save, spend, share, invest, protect, and borrow. And when I say protect, I mean actually online security, like keeping kids safe from predators, from hacking and data breaches and all those things. Kids need to learn online safety because that actually directly relates to protecting wealth, protecting with insurance or protecting against too many taxes. Like protect is a huge thing for kids and no one ever talks about it. So, you know, after 6 million families of doing this, those are our seven. And each of this, the money skills, there's four stages of them that we train on. Um, so let's take earn for a second, which is the first one. You know, you can't just be like, all right, 16-year-old kid, go get a job, okay? When, it, when you come to earning, what is money? You know, kids actually have a wrong view of what money is. This is why you get kids who hoard everything because they're scared or kids who spend everything because they think it'll be gone tomorrow, right? You have to take this idea of earning one step back. And it's actually about creating value first. Money is a store of value. Money is not good or bad, right? A lot of the poverty mindset says that money's evil. Profit's evil. Money's bad. It's, it's here today, gone tomorrow. But if you think that money is good, all good and it's all your idol and it's everything you care about in life, you've got just as many problems as the poverty mindset because now it's your identity. Now you're going to basically give away everything in your family that matters the most, the relationships, the ties, the values of the family. And you're going to raise a bunch of kids who are just terrified and anxious all the time, right? These are like unlimited demands that parents put on kids. Yep. Yep. So money is a store of value. And when you think about it that way, money is earned by creating one type of value, which we call material value. There's also emotional value and spiritual value, right? That you can create. And if we teach our kids to create value first, then it, that's, that's the rocket fuel for their future. So when it comes to earning money, money is just a result for creating value, material value. So the first thing we teach in Gravy Stack and in all of our workshops and everything we teach is teach your kids to create value first in the home. And we do it by having them 
do the home economy system. So in the app, this is our answer to allowance, by the way, because allowance is socialism. I mean, it's basically giving your kids money for free and it creates codependency. It's actually linked in a bunch of studies to a lack of motivation and an, an, an aversion to work for kids, actually. So allowance is a terrible idea. So what we created was the home economy system because you need your kids to have making and managing money. Because if you just don't pay them anything and they do all their chores for free and you never they never deal with real money, well, now they're going to get out into the real world and make a bunch of mistakes, okay? Big, costly mistakes. So the home economy system has three E's. Expectations, expenses, extra pay. If you have teenagers or, or young kids, do this and you're set. First, you set the expectations. Here's what are the things you're going to do in the home that you're not getting paid for. This is your role in the home. Make your bed, clean your room, do your homework first, dishes trash, right? Like this is your role. You're never getting a dime for that. If you want to keep our last name, <laughs> you have your ex expectations. And then you have expenses that kids need to start covering. This is where all parents mess up, all of them. So don't worry, you're not alone. Parents pay for everything. They rarely give the kids things to cover on their own because the kids don't have money. But if you give these expenses to your kids, now they have a motive to earn, which is the first money skill, right? So when you pass off expenses like toys, trinkets, games, in you know any technology, your kids should make the money for their first phone when they're teenagers, by the way. They'll treat it like gold. Um, social outings with friends, social trips birthday presents for the friends' parties. If the kid buys that present, they're going to run in and be like, open this right now. I want to see your face. If mm -hmm. you do everything, they're not going to learn generosity. They're just going to chuck it on the table, right? So when you give kids expenses to be in charge of, then it goes into toy, sporting equipment and clothes, right? Have them be in charge of planning ahead for these expenses. Now they want to earn. Now you give them the third E, which is extra pay opportunities, home gigs. And so in the app, in Gravy Stack, we have like 55 of these gigs kids can do. And they repeat weekly, monthly, daily, mow the lawn, yard work, make a meal, sweep the garage, wash the windows, organize a closet, you know, clean a bathroom, sweep the common areas, plan the next family trip, coupons for the next grocery run, all these gigs that the kids can do. But we also have brain gigs that they can use to earn. A brain gig teaches kids that they can make money using their brain. You and I make money using our brain. Why are we not teaching children this? So a brain gig for us is like in the app, you can basically say, hey, if you, if you listen to this podcast and tell me two things you learned about it, you get three bucks. And one way you're going to apply it to your life, it's right there in the app. Um, a TED Talk, a PragerU video, an article, um, a, a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Acres of Diamonds, all these incredible things kids and teens should be reading to prepare them for the real world, right? A real estate, an investing you know, game or tool or book, right? Kids should make a few bucks learning these things on top of their expected homework because now they're learning to use their brain to create value. What an unbelievable way to gamify the whole system. Now yeah. they think they think the whole thing's a game, right? We don't say chores, we say gigs. And, and that way the kids now are like, they're pumped. We have kids doing on average six gigs a month or six gigs a week in our app with thousands of families. Yeah. And they're making on average a hundred and something a month. But the parents are on fire because they're like, hey, we were spending hundreds a month. Now the kids are spending less than we were because they're getting smart about it. They're learning the trade-off of goods, prices of things. They don't need the Air Jordans. They're good with the Reeboks, right? Like nice. they're getting smart and they're planning ahead. This is how you teach a kid to budget. This is the only way to teach a kid to budget. If you think about it. You, gamification is huge. We see this in learning. Like for example, we really admire what Duolingo did for language learning. Um, yeah. Write short, to the point, don't waste time, educate people and gamify the experience. What you're doing here is really cool. I'll be downloading your app here after the call. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, let's talk about building this business or uh, let's take a step back here. How's it monetized? Uh, it's $7 a month to start. Okay. Within a few months, we're probably going to end up dumping some of that and make it way cheaper for people. But if they type in dinner 30, the word dinner and three zero, they'll get a month for free just as a gift for your listeners. Yep. And don't forget that the average kid is saving mom and dad like 600 bucks in the first yeah. month. So yeah. the return on this is about 80 to a hundred fold right away. Not to mention all the long-term success mm -hmm. you're giving your kids. I mean, the, if you download gravy stack, our parents that are using it are reporting that kids are making about a thousand dollars outside the home in the first five to six months. 
doing gigs in the community, neighborhood gigs, like they're because you take the capabilities at home. This is stage two of earning. Now you're taking those capabilities elsewhere and bringing in extra revenue. Mm. So flipping assets in the garage that mom and dad don't want anymore. Why not sell them online for 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks? Go to garage sales. Why not do the gigs that you've been doing at home and just replicate them for the neighbors and the there community? So now they're bringing in net funds. So this thing, this thing cash flows for mom and dad like right away. Huge right. cash flow. And then don't even th- don't even forget this is millions of dollars of change for the rest of their life, right? This changes kids' mindsets for the whole world. And they never ask mom and dad for money again. That is the number one benefit of Gravy Stack. No more conflict over chores. Mm. No more issues around money and the greedy gimmies. Now the kids know exactly where to go to earn, cover their own expenses, plan ahead, budget. And then when they make their money in Gravy Stack, it's a real bank. So they get a debit card and you watch the money flow into their saving and investing jar. You watch some of it flow into their share jar, which hooks up to every nonprofit in the country. And then the rest goes into their spend jar for their debit card to start covering those expenses you gave them. Yep. So they're watching that flow. That's critical for kids. They have to see the flow of money digitally because if it's, it's the only way to connect physical cash to the digital world. Because kids and teens, all they see is you swiping your card. They don't see the pinch of spending. They see it. It's just as easy as swiping that card. We had this issue with my daughter um, my when she was like four years old. We were going taking the kids to dinner and we passed by the the ice cream shop. And Reagan, my daughter, she's like, daddy, can we please get ice cream? I was like, sweetheart, we haven't had dinner yet. What are you talking about? Like, no. She goes, no, you don't understand. Just take out your card in your pocket and you give it to the guy. And then we get ice cream. It's it's as easy as that. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Our kids, they totally missed the boat. This is when they were younger. So we realized, yeah, okay, you have to see the flow of money. We actually used a lot of parents saying that exact thing to build Gravy Stack this way. You know, and we have 30 patents on the app to show everything related to flow of money and the gaming and banking is one. So it's all built in in a way where kids are starting to understand, oh, I made $10 by doing my gigs. I don't get to spend all 10. Three of them went into save and invest. One of them went into share and now I have six left. Okay, now next time I need to make $15 or I need to make 25 to cover what I want. That's a critical lesson learned that most parents forget with their kids. They just Kids think they can spend everything they get or they save everything because they're hoarders and they're scared and they're nervous, right? You've got to be able to teach kids about abundance mindset, right? In fact, our kids in Gravy Stack are about four and a half times more generous than the average kid and all the other bank out there because with the value creation drive and the gigs, kids are able to be more generous and they give more through that share jar because they know how to create value and have an abundance mindset. That's powerful. Uh, let's jump to the fifth module here, which is the invest. What do you? What does the app teach about investing? Yeah. So when it comes to investing um, with kids, we basically want them to understand that, like the eighth wonder of the world, compounding interest. Mm-hmm. Right. We start with a version of the marshmallow game and delayed gratification. We we teach them basically what it means to wait or what it means to be an immediate gratification kid, right? That's the first set of games. You have to think long-term. You know, it's a lot of this, you know, live like no one else today so you can live like no one else tomorrow, right? We teach kids passive income in in level five of our game. Um, So it's, and then we also teach risk and reward. Kids need to understand the different types of risk and tolerances out there and the different types of ways to invest. You can start by investing in in the stock market with diversified portfolios. You can do ETFs, you can do real estate, Um, and what percentage are you okay with doing each of these, but we want them to really, you, you, the first thing you want to do with a kid is to see the mountain of growth over time. It's like, Hey, if you start putting in 10 bucks, 50 bucks, you know, a month, by the time you're here, you know, in a decade or two, you're at the million mark. Right. And you want to see that mountain of growth over time. I don't think kids until they see it visually, they don't understand the, tr- the real value of compounding interest. So it's critical, like now in the, in our games, and we're not, the investing level's not live yet, by the way. So mm-hmm. we're just teaching kids this like outside and some of our resources sure. for families. Like we, I think we have 30 games live in the app and we're, we're gonna get to hundreds eventually here. Um, but it's really important for kids to be thinking long-term instead of short-term. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's our that goal. Was- 
I was, yeah, very curious to see how this aligns with uh, Ticker. <laughs> yeah, I um, love it. This podcast episode is sponsored by Ticker. Ticker is a platform that helps you manage your own investments with confidence. Check this out. Let's search for Apple. You can see Apple is on sale. That's looking good. Score 61 out of 100 and margin of safety is 75%. Higher the score, the safer the investment. And the higher the margin of safety, the higher potential returns you can make. In this case, you can see the share price is 175 as of the recording of this video. And the upside potential, the fair value is 398. All right, let's look at a different stock. We'll go to GameStop. In this case, GameStop is overpriced, scores 39 out of 100. That's not looking too good. And the margin of safety is 0%. Here are some other features within. You can create your own custom dashboard. I like to set up and take a look at the top gainers and losers in the last 24 hours. I also like to take a look at the top search stocks, but you can really customize the dashboard to whatever you want. We have stocks, ETFs, crypto. This is a big one. We have a watch list tool that allows you to add stocks to the watch list and if anything changes, such as that score or margin of safety, you automatically get notified. I call it the, the set it and forget it feature. And then we have portfolio trackers and alerts. So if you're looking for strong stocks, want to avoid bad stocks and learn how to invest, I invite you to join Ticker for free. Now, going back to the, the business here a little bit, do you charge $7 a month? Is that per family or per child? For the first kid, it's seven bucks. Mm -hmm. And then $3 a month for any additional kid. So 10 bucks okay. for two kids. Yep. Sure. Sure. And then if okay. you pay for the year, it's like a 15% discount. Perfect. And then usually parents make that money back in about eight days, 12 yeah. days. Right. And then it's just like <laughs> cash flowing from there. Um, but I think, yeah, it's a subscription just so we can cover the cost of the bank. Sure. Right. Cause we have costs for all the accounts and things like that. Um, in the future, we may change that to basically just being like, as you pay kids on payroll, we'll just charge a buck or two for payroll costs when you, because this is what happens. They do the gigs because that's the number one win of our app. You have the expectations, expenses, and extra pay gigs. Every week now, it's this automated system. Kids know exactly where to go to complete their gigs. And then they just check it off right there in the app. Their weekly payday amount goes up. And then Saturday at midnight, the paycheck goes right from the parent wallet because they hook up any bank to it. Mm -hmm. Parent wallet funds the kids, goes right through their money machine. They get their debit card. And then Sunday morning, the next printout for the next week is emailed to mom and dad to throw on the fridge. And they can replace it if they've That's changed cool. any of the gigs. But now it's this system in the home. And then parents go, yeah, we need to make that a gig. All the time they're doing it. They're like, oh, yeah, we got to make this a gig. Grandparents start calling. They're like, hey, I want to get in on this. I want to give them $100 worth of gigs. Here's 10 things I'd love them to like read and learn and watch and listen to and report back what they learned and how they're going to apply it. Sure. What a great way to connect families while teaching this stuff. Yeah. Making the, again, the education, making it very simple and gamified is definitely the way to go. Very affordable product, low price point. Um, how many users in the platform now? Thousands. Yep. We, we're talking we, uh, uh, 10,000 or less. Yeah. there's. Uh, I think there's probably 2,000 families. Okay. Um, and then we have a huge wait list of families for our next launch. So we've got about a thousand affiliates too, um, which represents about 50 to 80 million reach. And we're just launching them kind of one by one, right? Because right now we're in open beta for the app. Ah, we're not okay. fully like lot. You can download it and go by listening to this sure. and you're going to have a great experience, but we're not pressing blast to the whole world until we've finished more of the levels and switched out some of the tech pieces. Like we're moving to React Native and we're making changes to make the gigs easier for families. You can okay. still get in and go, but there's sure. bugs we want to work out before we go. And you're, you're an, you said you're a bank. Are you using like a banking software? I'm guessing you're using Plaid to make the connections. Yes, we use Plaid and then we use Synapse yeah. as our yeah. banking as a service rail. So we are kind of the front end of the bank. Like Correct. the UI, UX, and then all the banks is stored. Kids are actually getting like three and a half, four percent on their interest already That's on their uh, savings jar. Um, yeah. I, I asked that question because we have some more technical people in our audience be like, are you a true bank? Or are you you the front end? And it doesn't really matter from a business standpoint. They they would care more about the security. So um, yeah. Synapsis and Plaid are both 
Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then we're going to have a, we're going to have a Stripe plugin as well. So kids, you know, if they're doing gigs in the, in the community, we just want to make it super easy for them, like a QR code or a simple text link Mm -hmm. where people can pay directly into their account. So just making it super fast for them. Yep. Um, as far as marketing, how are you getting this out? I know you're kind of, uh, you're not putting your foot all the way on the gas pedal, but is this traveling by word of mouth? Or are you doing some marketing? Yeah, it's, um, our goal is to get our viral coefficient up. That's why we're not going big yet. We don't even mm-hmm. have the ability for people to rate us in the app. They, they can, but we're not doing any of the sharing and the rating until we fixed all the little bugs in sure. the app. So again, we're in open beta. So Right now, the people that are coming in are just telling their friends. So Great. it's just been slowly tracking up. Um, we've thrown zero dollars at marketing yet. We're doing our SEO work. We're doing affiliate, you know, generation. So we're, mm-hmm. you know, I've have, I've have tons of partners and affiliates and friends. And then we also have our higher ticket programs. So we have our family money skills course, which is thousand yep. dollars. Basically, we say thousand dollars to help your kids net a million in the next decade. Um, and then that's our course, um, on dinnertable.com. So we actually, we own gravystack.com and dinnertable.com and dinnertable.com is where they can get the course and as well as join us in a workshop. So we have parents coming through our workshops every month sure. to where we teach them all the core skills on family legacy and financial skills and really mm-hmm. how to crush it with their kids and grandkids forever. So that's yeah. a, that's our higher ticket. Yeah. And how many employees? Uh, we've got about 30. Okay. In total. Yep. And since this is beta, I assume, did you raise a round of venture capital? Yep. We've raised 12 million bucks to build this. Okay. And um, we have our burn rate. We have our revenue rate. We have our milestones. You know, it's, mm-hmm. I love the higher ticket programs just because there's such a deeper value to the families. Yeah. And if the people do our courses and workshops, they get gravy stack included for free. Yeah. So yeah, that's the powerful way to do it. We just add it in. We, we do the same thing with our courses as you join and you get, you get a tier for free included. So, yeah, yeah. We're like really big on affiliate marketing. I've got a lot of experience with channel partners and, and affiliates. Um, dive into that a little bit, because I think a lot of people out there, especially new entrepreneurs are thinking about, okay, so I need to promote my business. So right away, they think of Facebook ads or SEO or YouTube, and that's all nice, but where the needle really moves is leveraging partners. So what's yeah. your strategy there with affiliates? Yeah. Our, our number one way to grow right now is webinars. Okay. So everybody wants their audience to get this training, right? So I do an hour long training on family money skills, family legacy, the best strategies of the best families in the world of what they did with their kids and grandkids to succeed. And everybody wants their audience to do that, whether it's a huge social audience or a big email list or a bunch of clients for a financial group or law law firm group or speaking on stages at masterminds and events. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just spoke to at Aspire in San Diego with Dan Fleischman last week. And uh, I, I asked the audience, there's thousands of people. I was like, raise your hand if any if you learned money skills as a kid. Zero hands in the whole audience. <laughs> of course, yeah. And I was like, that's why I'm here. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's, that's the best way to grow is just webinars with partners. And then there's just a rev share. Yep. What's and your so, percentage? Uh, it, it varies. Usually it's 10%. Sometimes okay. we'll give a higher rev s- split on the front end. And then the back end is on us, sure. um, depends or 10, 10% on the whole thing. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to be an affiliate of ours, just go to gravystack.com slash affiliate yep. and they can sign up and then, yeah. So we're just bringing in JVs. We do like 10 a month for these webinars. Yep. And uh, like, I just went live this morning to 900,000 moms on a Facebook group and I trained them all. And now we're doing a big webinar to follow up and help them get in and train the family. So I think that's a great way to go. Um, I think real growth happens in a business when you have customers telling each other like wildfire, you know, that's why I think so much of the, like, if you look at Elon Musk, he never spent a dollar on marketing. He just built something that was so good that everyone's telling everybody else. Okay. And yes, he used social to grow and move markets and do a bunch of crazy stuff. But the truth of the matter is if you build something that has what we call a viral coefficient, where it's built in such a way where every one, like a two to one viral coefficient is one person uses, they tell two, right? Um, Chat GPT, when it launched, it was a 30 to one viral coefficient, wild scale. Yes. And that's how it became $29 billion right away because 30 people found out for every one person using it. 
that is a home run. So, you know, there's a joke out there that's like, yeah, you only need to spend on marketing when your product's not that good. Um, that's not true, uh, fully because people need to know about you somehow, but how can you build into your product or service or your system viral growth, right? Through challenges, through referrals, through turning your customers into your biggest raving fans and voice, you know, big mouthpieces, right? So that's really what we want to focus on here is doing something that's so powerful for kids and families that they're telling cousins, they're telling their friends, they're telling their school, they're telling their sports team, their kids are getting so much benefit from it that they're just telling everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's our real goal is really focus on product, really focus on your service. You know, it, if you have a higher ticket, then you should definitely build in like a referral system on the back end, right? Let your customers do the talking. Yep. And if, and if they're giving you bad reviews, well then fix it, yeah. <laughs> you know, like learn, yeah. learn, you know, we want feedback on everything we're doing. Like I, I get, we get over 7,000 error requests a day and feedback requests a day. Right. Cause there's thousands of families in here, but they have a bunch of kids using it too. Mm -hmm. And all their family and friends are given in too. There's a, there's a ton of people using gravy stack right now. And so, and we don't want to go to the 50 to hundred thousand million mark until we've turned all of them into raving fans. So it's been hard because we're burning the cash, but I want it to be world-class. And so that's the only way to go. And, and you can blow a bunch of ad dollars and get your cost per acquisition to a, mean, a manageable rate. But why would I want to have more errors with, you know, 50,000 people, you know? Yeah. No that, thanks. What is the old saying? If you're throwing money at a, a problem, it's just going to amplify the problem at something like that. And yeah. you, would, you would, you would just see more bugs coming through your tickets. system. <laughs> you don't need that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah. I'd say in January, we're going to be going big. January, okay. February, we'll start to go out big to the world and you'll start hearing about it all over the press. And yeah. Awesome. We may, we may move this thing. To, I mean, I, this is a podcast, so I'm telling you more tech stuff, but we may move this thing to be like a version of like just a ledger, like a Venmo and make it simple and, you know, make it easier. Like our whole goal is make gigs easy for families to do and expenses easy for kids to plan ahead for and cover. If you get those things right, you're teaching earn, save, spend, share, invest all of it. Right. So, right. Yeah. Before we jump to the rapid fire round, is there one key takeaway, like a first step you could give to parents that have kids that are kind of nearing that age, let's say five, six years old, maybe a little older? Yeah. Best advice I can give to younger parents. I mean, this is for all the parents too, even teenagers. Mm -hmm. Money money is the biggest fight in the home that kids report. So we surveyed thousands of families and the kids all said, I don't want to talk about money. It's the biggest issue in the home. There's a lot of conflict around it. Parents say things like, we can't afford this. You know how much this costs. Money doesn't grow on trees. You know how hard I worked to get you this and you guys just took it for granted. You blew this. And they see parents stressing over debt and bills, right? So kids actually don't want to talk about it. Uh, and so the best thing you can do with younger kids is start having money combos, especially with teenagers. Your kids need to know what you do for work to add value to other people. They'll cheer you on instead of mad at you for doing work instead of hanging out with them. Tell your kids when you're going to invest in something. Tell them what it is. What's the model? What's the return? Why you're doing it? Tell your kids about what you, you know, how you earn and create value in your work. Tell your kids about every jo donation you guys are going to make as a family and get it, get their opinions. Maybe they can have better ideas, you know? Start bringing them in in conversations. And before they go to bed every night, ask them what value they created for others today. That's the best advice I got from Sharon Lecter. She said her dad did that every day growing up and it ch changed her whole life to who she is today. She's like the godmother of financial literacy. That's awesome. Rich dad, poor dad, cash flow game. She did all that stuff with Robert. Mm. So that's really my best advice for families. And then again, like Gravy Stack, I'm building Gravy Stack for my kids. I got four little kiddos and this system has been so powerful for us as a family. My kids never ask for money. They know exactly where to go to earn it and create value in the home. No more conflict over chores at all. Um, and they're they're finding new things around the house to do and coming to us saying, hey, I'd like to get $12 for doing these four things. We're like, yeah, <laughs> like, let's go. And because they're like, because I need to pay for, I'm planning ahead for this toy I want, or I'm planning ahead for this sports thing or this birthday present for a friend's party. Like, this is how you get it to start moving. Yeah. Okay. Love it. That's awesome. All right. Let's dive into the rapid fire round. This is the part of the episode where we get to find out who Scotch really is. All right. Again, let's go. Give, 
If you can, try to answer each question in about 15 seconds or less. You ready? Let's go. All right. So what is your favorite podcast? Uh, I love the Ed Milet show. Mm -hmm. Um, He's a friend and his podcasts are just killer. My goal is to get on it here pretty quick. (laughs) I was just listening to him and Alex from Ozzy. Oh, yeah. Alex is amazing, too. Anything Alex says, he's like my generation's Tony Robbins or Zig Ziglar. Like, he's really good. He's uh, he's a stud. All right. So what is a recent book you read and would recommend? Well, other than Value Creation Kid, if you've got kids, that's our bestseller. Um, it's number four on Wall Street Journal. So it'll really help your family set this up. My other favorite book is uh, The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. Uh, probably one of the best business books I think ever written. Um, yeah, that one, I, I mean, there's so many that come to mind, but that's one of the best. Awesome. It's a playbook. I mean, it's a manual for starting and growing and running a business. So good. Or the Bible. I read the Bible every day. <laughs> I love the Bible. That's probably the best business book ever written. Mark my words. I And family book and faith book and attitude book and mental health book and everything book. Yeah. Wisdom all around. I've been reading a lot too, especially with what's going on in the world as we speak. Middle East. We yep. could talk about that all day. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. man. Yeah. Um, all right. This is a fun one. What is your favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Great movie. Or Gladiator or Braveheart. Any of those. Any comeback, underdog, like Classic. fight through it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's a good one. What is the worst advice you ever received? Give up. It's too hard. Give up. Hmm. That's probably the worst <laughs> advice. Well, or, big, or uh or crypto advice. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, we could go into that too. Um, but yeah. All right. What? People, I think a lot of people in your life as an entrepreneur, it's either a jail cell or it's um, heaven. It's a beach. It's a beautiful tropical beach. And I think you decide. You decide. Mm-hmm. You know, I think sometimes people are their own worst manager and they put these pressures on themselves that are just, they kill them slowly. Um, and that's when people in your life are like, just give up. What are you doing? Like, this is too hard. Why are you doing this? Spend more time with your family, your kids. I'm like, I have great time with my family and my kids. I'm doing this for them. But I also want to help 50 million kids. I have a burning drive deep down. So now when people are like, hey, this is too hard, I'm like, good. We're learning along the way more than anybody in the world. And when we overcome, we'll change the world. Well, I look at it this way too, is if it's difficult, yet you're making progress, you're creating a moat. There's less people are going to follow your footsteps. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's just too hard. But that's okay, because uh, entrepreneurs, that's like the nod of the hat. It's like, we're going through it. I think the world is built on the back of small businesses yeah. and entrepreneurs that change it. So, right. right. You probably like Myron Golden. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Atlas Shrugged that's and me. Myron Golden. There you go. Yeah. Preach. All right. Um, one more question here. We got to jump off, which is, what is the best advice you ever received? Tip well. Love it. You can unpack that for hours, but. I know Myron talks about use the money to love the people. Don't use the people to love the money. Yeah. He tips very well. He's big on that. Yeah. Yeah. When my parents, when my parents dropped me off for college decades and decades ago, my mom gave me a hug. She said, if it doesn't point to Jesus, there's no point. Mm. My dad, she got in the car. My dad shook my hand and his hand was a $50 bill. And he said, tip well. (laughs) And it's really what it is. It's an abundance mindset. It's a generosity mindset. It's a giving mindset. Like the pie gets bigger, the more we solve problems and help other people get what they want and need. It's as simple as that. All right. And one last question here is where can the audience reach you? Yeah. So just I'm Scott Donnell on any socials. Um, We can give you the links for show notes. And if they want to download Gravy Stack, we'll give you the link as well. Um, And then they can just type in dinner 30 and they'll get a free month. Uh, and if they want to come to a free training, like we're doing, we do webinars all the time for family legacy and training kids. Um, and if we can give you a link to the next one as well, and they can come in and listen more and learn more. And our whole goal is making these things operational in the home. If you don't act on it and do anything with it, it's useless. So those are probably the best ways they can find me. And then the book, they can just grab it on Amazon, Value Creation Kit. There you go. We'll have all the links in our show notes, but thank you so much for your time, Scott. This was great. Oh, I forgot one more thing. We have a show called Smart Money Parenting. Mm. We do it every every three days. There's an episode. It's 15-minute bite-sized things to help families. So Smart Money Parenting, it's like a top five parenting podcast. So they can find that if they're on Sweet. Apple Podcasts right now. Just go search it, Smart Money Parenting. Sweet. All right, Scott. Thank you.
Thank you. We'll see you. Bye.